Here are four movies. Which one are you most interested in? Would you like to start watching it? You probably already know the answer. And likewise for this. And this. But how about this? And how about this? And how about the whole of Netflix's current catalogue? It's like deciding which seashell on the beach is the prettiest. You won't end up choosing anything. This is what behavioural scientists call choice overload. People walking away because they have too many choices. Choice overload is the fundamental problem that Netflix and other recommender systems solve. How to transform a catalogue of billions of items into a small list of items that a customer in front of them will like. Imagine if you had to write a program to do exactly that. You might feel like you've been asked to send a hot air balloon to space. But today, I'm going to teach you how to build a recommender system from scratch. More importantly, I'll illustrate some fundamental business and computer science concepts you can use when building other products. Let's walk through how I'd build the prototypical example of a recommender system. A movie recommender system. I'll call the system Webflix and assume the first customers will be arriving very shortly. In other words, I need to recommend things to people who I don't know anything about. What can I do? A common mistake is to look for the latest and greatest algorithms. Such algorithms require a lot of time, effort, and data on user behavior. Using those algorithms now is like buying a big plane for an airport with a grass runway. You spend lots of money, and the plane won't be able to take off. Instead, since I don't know what my customers like, I think about what the general population likes. What are the most popular movies? There are many ways to define popularity. So I pick a reasonable one when starting out. Say, a movie's total box office earnings. And make any easy refinements that make the measure a lot better. People aren't just interested in popular movies. So let's think of other things that get people interested in movies. People often watch new movies, highly rated movies, Oscar winning movies, and so on. I'll create a list for each category and add them below the popular category. After I run out of ideas, I'll partition movies in ways that help me learn more about my customers. One obvious way is by genre. Comedy, horror, action, and so on. Then I'll place these categories below the existing categories. These categories will initially be in random order. However, after a customer watches a few movies, I'll place genres they are more likely to watch closer to the top. Not only can this help customers find movies they like quickly, I'll also gain an incredibly valuable resource when customers select from these categories data about what movies they like. Now let's take a step back to think about what I did. First, notice how I started the video with the fundamental problem that Webflix is trying to solve. Finding a small set of movies that the customer wants. I kept Webflix objective in mind when building version 1 of the platform and will continue to do so when I make versions 2 and 3. The best products solve real customer problems. They aren't fancy technology in search of a use case. So always keep the customer problem at the top of your mind. Also, my decisions were basically opinion driven. At the start, opinions are much more important than data, because there isn't much good data. To make sure your opinions are as high quality as possible, think deeply before writing a single line of code. Tony Fidel, Apple's senior vice president for the iPhone, found it helpful to imagine personas interacting with the product. This helped him create features that improve the product. For example, you can imagine a software engineer in his 20s called Tim. His Webflix watching is often interrupted by calls to work on urgent tasks and spontaneous requests from his girlfriend to meet up. So you might create a continue where you left off category. So far, I've assumed that I already had a large collection of high-quality movies. 
but in the real world, it's best to examine the quality of the movie collection. More importantly, talk to the people who created the movie collection. How did they create it? What quality checks were there? In an ideal world, there won't be any issues, but systems fail. So even if you're a junior employee, it's good to ask such questions. The success of the project will reflect well on you. Webflix is now useful to movie maniacs, who are willing to spend some time scrolling through lists of movies to find something they like. However, it's less useful to the average movie viewer, who is less patient. How can I provide personalized recommendations so that everyone spends less time finding movies? Once there's a few hundred customers, I'll use their movie watching data to construct a new category called recommended for you. For now, state-of-the-art algorithms are still not worth the cost due to the time and effort required. So I'll use a basic algorithm. Let's start with item-item collaborative filtering. Here's how the algorithm works. First, I compute how similar movies are to each other. There are many ways to measure similarity, but here's the simplest. To calculate how similar movie X is to movie Y, I can ask, among the users who saw movie Y, what percent also saw movie X on Webflix? Here's an example. This table has data on which users watch which movies. Using this data, I can calculate the similarity scores between each pair of movies. For instance, among the three users that have watched movie 2, one of them has watched movie 1. So the similarity between movie 1 and movie 2 is 0.33. Notice that the similarity between movie 2 and movie 1 is 0.5, because of the two people that have watched movie 1, one of them has watched movie 2. Computing the similarity table is step 1 of item-item collaborative filtering. Let's move on to step 2. For each movie the user hasn't seen, I can then identify the three most similar movies that the user has watched and sum their similarity scores. Movies with the highest total scores will be recommended. In other words, movies that are most similar to those the user has watched will be shown. The beauty of collaborative filtering is that you don't need to know anything about the movie itself to make recommendations. All you need to know is who watch which movies. However, there are certainly downsides. Perhaps the biggest downside is low serendipity. As the algorithm tends to recommend movies similar to what the user has watched, it's unlikely to recommend interesting movies the user wasn't looking for. Serendipity often creates pleasant surprise and magic moments. How can we fix some of the problems with item-item collaborative filtering? After Webflix acquires thousands of active customers, I'll use state-of-the-art deep learning algorithms. By examining the watch history of thousands of users on millions of movies, the deep learning algorithm can predict which movies a user will watch and recommend those movies. The deep learning algorithms that most big companies use today are informally called the Twin Towers. Explaining the Twin Towers is an entire video on its own, so check out my video on the YouTube algorithm if you want to know more. Let's pause and think about the journey to a state-of-the-art system. At the start, our system was probably good enough only for the most enthusiastic movie fans. We built a product that wasn't good enough for the masses. But it was cheap and easy to implement, and did not require any customer movie watching data. On the other hand, our state-of-the-art system performs incredibly now, but would have performed extremely poorly at the start, due to a lack of data. There are many ways to build any product. Know the strengths and weaknesses of each method before you decide which tool to use. Don't use the latest and greatest technology simply because all the big guys are using it. And while I'll leave viral marketing for another video, the fact that version 1 only appealed to movie lovers suggests that if you're launching a new product, think carefully about what niche you should target at the start. It will probably be more specific than your initial guess. Most importantly, 
notice that I didn't include a single line of code in this video, nor did I talk about any programming language. Building a recommended system is so much more than coding. It requires an intricate understanding of the context, knowing which algorithms to use, and continual focus on the customer problem you're trying to solve, all before you write your first line of code.